All right, so we are talking about two-point perspective and showing how that's when you have only verticals that are parallel to each other and a horizon line, which is your only true horizontal. And every other angle is going to point towards one of two vanishing points, which are usually outside of the picture frame. And that's what gives the shot its power. Now there's something else I wanted to point out in this shot that I just think is remarkable and shows the tight control this, this photographer had. So this building is reflective. And this photographer found the exact height at which the reflections in the building of these trees and of the parking lot and everything, where that lined up perfectly with the horizon line behind the building and the top of this building. Three very separate places in space that he had to line up with his point of view so that they didn't um, pull focus away from this large structure. So this lines up perfectly with the reflection, which lines up perfectly with this existing horizon line. And that's not at all a coincidence. That's done by finding just the right point where all of those things stack together you can also use your zoom to change the curvature of your lens a little bit to really try to control these aspects. That's the kind of thinking we want to start applying to our shots with this next project. Now, the most you can do with linear perspective is what's called three-point perspective. And if you look at this photo of this hotel in the woods, it's impossible to find a perfect horizontal or a perfect vertical anywhere. So first, let's try with verticals. So the verticals are not perfectly vertical as they are in two-point. Instead, you travel, they travel up above the picture plane until eventually they hit a convergence, which is a vanishing point up above. Just like if we were looking up at a skyscraper, how it would eventually, no matter how tall it was, um, all meet together. But then, if we look at the horizontals, there are no horizontals. Instead, all of these horizontals, because instead of seeing the corner of a building on the outside, like we saw with this one, we're seeing the corner of a building on the inside, and the corners are bending out from it. So here's the angle, and we carry that angle through to a vanishing point over here. And then here's the angle of these, because that's the corner and that carries through to a vanishing point there. And the reason we can't even find a, a horizontal for the horizon line is the horizon line, which connects the two vanishing points for the two-point perspective aspects, is at an angle. So in photography, unlike the human eye, you can shift your angle on the action to tilt the horizon as well, to give it a little bit more visual um, oomph and movement. So that's how three-point perspective works. There are no horizontals, no verticals in it at all. But every line, every diagonal converges into one of three vanishing points. Okay, with those kind of uses of perspective in mind, we get appreciation for these very kind of forced perspective shots. So this is a one-point perspective but so extreme because every step of the spiral staircase is angling towards the vanishing point, like flower petals coming out. Or an early shot of the Rockettes, right? This is actually two-point perspective, where this strong linear element and this strong linear element are meeting up at a horizon lo uh, vanishing point over here, but they also have a depth to them because we're looking at them at a corner instead of flat on. So their heights and their depths also converge at a vanishing point over here. So we, we feel that there are real presence, kind of like this building, except they just happen to be made up of people because they're arranged and shot so carefully. Here we have a shot that hides all of its perspective. It's made to look perfectly flat and just to carve up the picture plane with one horizontal and then just the elevation shot, hiding the corners. 
Here we see just a simple still life, but it's using stacked perspective to really activate the space, showing us that this is in front of this and that this is in front of this. So every th though all the lines are very, even though they're man-made, are very soft-edged and not lining up, even though we're seeing this in two-point perspective, it's the stacked perspective, the relation of this to this, that, that really gives us the depth. There's a long history of artists trying to make nature into something more orderly. Well, photography allows us to do that simply by the way we choose to angle our point of view. So we can shoot these trees as though they are architecture, as though they're all lined up towards a single vanishing point. And it gives them that power. We can look up at buildings and let them carve out the shapes around the buildings in the sky and thus flatten the whole space in this three-point perspective shot through kind of selective zooming and cropping. I love Texas because we have these heavy clouds that have kind of the flat shaded bottoms that themselves give a sort of perspective, right? So they look like the big skies, just like the, the road tapers to a finite point. The clouds feel like they taper into atmospheric perspective at the back. So using these, we can really bring this to heighten our photography. We really want the shot of the church to be about its height, then maybe three-point perspective is correct. Or if we want to match the exact eye level of a human being with our shot, we can make it feel like we are stepping right into the street during traffic in Times Square circa 1974. <laughs> but it's all about the position of that camera that gives you the immediacy of the space. When we're shooting landscapes, we can u make use of natural stacked and atmospheric perspective as things get softer and softer and more and more diffused as they go into the background to make this depth feel much deeper. We can use that same effect in interior spaces and in how we light our shots. So this one point perspective shot uses lighting and it gets softer and uh, the edges get less and less contrasted as we get closer to our vanishing point. Or the same thing here, where the, the one point perspective vanishing point is not centered in the frame, but is off to the edge. But all the diagonals lead right to it. Otherwise, we just have horizontals and verticals. So these are helpful tricks when we're taking tourist photos. We might play with what's called internal framing, where here's the picture plane format of our camera but we find little internal frames that we line up to take pictures within pictures. Or when we want to capture certain details with all their majesty and power, in this case, maybe use three-point perspective. Now, how much more powerful would this be if we then process the shot so this center line is, is actually perfectly centered in the picture plane and is perfectly vertical and everything's perfectly balanced on it? What if we can balance our photos so that there's just as much positive space as negative space? And you see how this cuts up the sky in, exact, in the exact proportion that the buildings take up the space. All ways that we can kind of play with this strong triangle of sky showing through, which really activates all of the, the more organic angles. So even though we're, we're shooting man-made spaces, and we're playing games with space, like this early shot of Boston, this very early photograph which was hand-colored to make it look like the whole horizon line was curved. This is called curvature of the Earth perspective, to make it look like you're seeing a lot more than you're seeing. What we want to be able to do is apply that to man-made spaces to make them feel incredibly charged and interesting. whether they're one point like this, 
whether they're two point like this. This is kind of one point in the middle and two point at the edges. It's, it gets complicated. Or whether we're shooting one point straight on very straightforwardly or we're shooting buildings with a very low horizon line like this so that they're about the sky or if we're shooting with a very high horizon line so they're really about the ground or if we're doing internal framing or just finding unique points of view on our world this is what this assignment's all about so in the next demo I'll, I'll demonstrate with actual exposures that we take on campus how we can process them to be a little bit more engaging along these lines a little bit more intentional and the only thing we're not allowed to do is crop and we're going to make a, a mini series of three raw exposures and then we're going to process those three exposures and put them up to photo bucket all right and for more examples you can look at the past student work already there <laughs>